Let's try from the fill out of the first course. Uh, okay. See if that's comfortable. If it's too long, um, tell me. Cool. And if you need anything else changed in your headphones, just let I'll me let know. let you know. Cool. Turn my volume down here. Onto my soul divides Flesh down, spot to dry This verse is a pretty good example too of why um, why compression is important because you can hear he gets real quiet and then he gets loud and but you can tell he's comfortable by by listening to vocals and it's probably easier for you guys to tell how comf comfortable he is and how dynamic it really is um, as opposed to the people um, listening at home but I, I I think people will get it in general yeah. um, and and if I don't know if the camera's ever on this but um, as we do this verse, you'll see that like there's parts that are doing like one dB or almost no compression, and that's kind of what I what what for me is like the ground. Um, it's it's the baseline. It's okay to have a few words not compressed as long as they're equal t or close to the things getting compressed. So some of those words you were saying were like almost not compressing, and some were doing like 14 dB. But to mm -hmm. us, it just sounds like a nice equal um, equal signal. That's, cool. that's pleasant to listen to. So, how how is that like feeling? A little more wise? vocal volume. More vocal volume. Yeah. Cool. Just, just the dry vocal. Yeah. Cool. How is the lead in? A little too long. Do you want it just from the guitar? Like. Da, 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 yeah, that's da, fine. Da. Cool. That'll, that'll do. So, yep. lead in. Cool. Make a marker called verse lead in. Like I said before, as you start messing with the vocals while you're tracking, you're, you're getting your cursor off. It's always good to have a marker so you can just click it and go right back instead of like zooming in and being like, you know, where, where was I at? And also, uh, I feel it's pretty important to start on beat. So if you didn't, if you're not like editing something exactly to the grid, don't start it on the grid, put it on the beat so it feels right. You know, every time he hears the song, he needs to feel it. And if you start it like right after the first kick drum hit or you're cutting off a little piece, instead of thinking about the, the vocal and just feeling the song and feeling the vocal, the singer's gonna start thinking about like what every time it comes in wrong he's just gonna go what and then it's gonna throw off his vocal so it's small but make sure the the lead-in is is a sounds cool sounds intentional um, usually I like to pick um, a lead-in that's in an even number of bars so it sounds like a, a actual piece of music and not just some weird section now real quick I'm gonna set up my headphones so I can hear him while we're tracking um, it'll make things make a little more sense for me so I can make more sense for you guys. So let me just listen. I have a separate volume control here on the front of my interface, which is really loud right now. Give me one second. And like I was saying before, the whole point of having a headphone mix and having your own mix is that you're comfortable as well, because obviously there's no point in you being uncomfortable because that just makes other people uncomfortable. Way too loud in my headphones, so I'll bring that down. And the people on the internet, you're always hearing what I'm hearing in my headphones or on the monitors. Um, the way we have things hooked up, you're not able to hear Alex's mix, but it's really not important because the only person that the headphone mix is important to is the singer. So unless you're singing along, it's not that important. Let me listen one more time because my vocals were a little loud. And I'm wearing my headphones funny because I'm trying not to mess up my hair. So. <laughs> I don't normally hang out in the studio with upside down headphones. I need some of those DJ phones right now. I'm 
feeling that now. And you definitely want to feel it because if you're not feeling it in your mix, then you're not going to be able to get the best takes. So that was just a dry run. I'm going to delete that. So we have the lead in now. Have a good, good headphone mix. I, I turn up the vocals a little bit. If you're feeling like they're not right, just let me know. All right. um, and let's just do that whole verse a couple more times. Um, honestly, we'll probably do it like three or four more times and get good takes. I, I heard a couple things in there, but I really just, just do your thing, man. It's sounding really good. good. So cool. let's, uh, we'll do a few more. We'll listen back and we'll kind of hone it in from there and address any real problems, but it, it's sounding awesome, man, so I'm, I'm not super concerned. Ready? Sounding great, man. Cool. Sounding really cool. So I'm going to save that take on another playlist. I already made one earlier, and if you missed that in Pro Tools, and I think most DAWs, um, if you just go, there's a point on the track that you can select and hit new, and that'll make a new playlist. I already have one here. You'll see me make more in a little bit, but I'm going to put that first take on a new playlist, so I'm not deleting it when I'm recording again. I don't want to put it on other tracks because once you start getting to like vocal number 20, you don't want 20 tracks for each take for each vocal. Then you have 200 tracks of vocals that you have no clue what anything is. So playlists are really good to keep things organized. I always have like a label for my main playlist. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. And it's for this one, it's, it's vocals 01. As, as I make new ones, they'll call it vocals 01. 0.01, vocals 1, 0.02, and so on. So again, when you're really tracking vocals, you don't want to take as much time in between takes. Yeah. Um, you just kind of want to roll with it. Yeah. So let's, on yeah. End, yeah, mm -hmm. I think um, I've noticed I, that first until mm -hmm. is kind of a hard one for me to hit just right out of the gate. So I think this time when it's doing that lead in, I might just do a couple like, just yeah, the just beginning of that until get, get the before the verse starts, because mm -hmm. that helps me to do it. Yep, and that's a that's a great technique. If you ever have a guy who's coming in on a note that's a, that's a little tough for them, or some vowels like U's and H's can be tricky sometimes, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and Y's actually. Um, so if you've got a guy who's like like he's coming in on a Y, he he might have a tendency to like if the first word was U. You might go you, you know, and you don't want you don't want a vocal that sounds like that. So a way to avoid that naturally is what he's about to do, and he just mentioned is just sing a little something beforehand. Doesn't have to be part of the song. It's gonna Could, sound weird. Yeah, it's gonna sound weird, but it's basically just a warm up, real quick, and it gets your voice in motion. Then when you hit the, what's gonna be the real take, it doesn't sound like you're punching in. So great technique, cool. excellent call, Alex. Let's do this. Take two. Cool. It's sounding good. Um, did did you, you were you hesitating a little bit on soul divides? Uh, I I got the, the lyrics messed yeah, up in my head. Explode. I was thinking first first. Yeah, totally but, uh, cool. Yeah. The, the rest of it sounded great, and yep. coming in until sounded way better. So I'm cool. gonna save this take because there were some really good parts. Let's do a couple more. Just get some more full takes, so mm -hmm. I have some stuff to work with. Ready? Yep. Until my soul divides Flash down, spot to dry Try to remember why I'm still here Oh, oh I'm still here Oh, oh. Cool. 
Let's do another. I feel like uh, towards the end, you can get a little more character into the um, the O's and the okay. still here. And that last one, just like, just do it. Just you know I mean, out. like, just don't, I feel like you're like not running through the finish line. Like okay. run, run through the finish line right into the chorus. And I am I am backing up a bit when I okay. do that O. Is that's, that, yeah, no, that's fine. That's good. That, it's that's cool, good. it sounds cool. Just, um, it gives it a cool natural sound. Cool. Um, but really just like, just do it so it, so it leads into the chorus. All right with full emotion. And again, I'm making another playlist. I'm on 0.03. Ready? Yes. I like that O at the end a lot. Um, I know this is going to go on playlist four. So I'm going to make a little marker here. Right where that O is. I'm going to sip some of this honey I have yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Does that wear you out a little, a little bit? Yeah. yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make this marker O4. And it uh, that'll remind me that as I'm going through them again, that take O4 had that really cool, cool O. And as for the honey thing, mm -hmm. aside from being a stomach ache, yeah. uh, it's a great way, like, you know, you don't want to rely on it, but if you're, like you said, like stamina, if you're getting to a point where, like, just taking a little break isn't helping, or you need to, um, or if your voice just isn't really sounding the way you want as a singer, or the singer's voice isn't the sounding the way you want as a producer, honey is a really cool way um, to not intake, like, you know, medicine or weird put weird things in your body, but also kind of coats your throat a little bit. Yeah. And um, Especially for the, the quieter kind of verse section of this song, I feel like it, um, the w more kind of breathy, whispery parts, it helps kind of add some depth or something to that. A little bit that. of glue yeah. to the yeah, vocal glue, cords. It stabilizes those quiet parts, because you're hitting exactly. loud parts too, kind of breaking them up. And yeah. It's like, it's almost as if the honey glues it back together.